Uh, what are the guidelines for interacting with non-Muslims in a multicultural society? <clears throat> so um, the way we deal with Muslims is not very different than how we deal with, um, I mean, the way we deal with non-Muslims is not very different than how we deal with Muslims. The only difference being is that Muslims have certain hukuk, they have certain rights. So for example, if a Muslim sneezes and they say, Alhamdulillah, I have to say, Yarhamukullah, that's his haq, that's his right. If a Muslim passes away, I have to attend their janazah, that is their right. If a, person, if a Muslim invites me, that is the right that I attend you know, when they invite me. This is not the right of the non-Muslim, right? This is not their right. I have a choice, I can go. If they invite me, I can go. I'm not obligated to respond to their atlas, right? Like if they sneeze, I don't have to respond to those things. But in, in, essentially, this is the only difference. This is the only difference. Um, I give preference to my Muslim brothers and sisters if there's oppression. I give preference to my Muslim brothers and sisters if when it comes to giving wealth. But this does not prohibit me from giving wealth to non-Muslims. This does not prohibit me from helping non-Muslims. Um, I like using the example, if I'm driving and I see a non-Muslim on the side of the road with a flat tire, should I help them? Absolutely, right? <laughs> the same way I should help a Muslim. Uh, so there are certain situations where you won't see much difference in how we deal with them. In general, I should try to give preference to Muslims when it comes to charity, uh, when it comes to help, when it comes to dua, but this does not prohibit me from helping non-Muslims and interacting with them and dealing with them, hiring them, um, yeah, so th this, I would say that in general, these are probably the differences between them. Uh, am, am I obligated to actively give dawah to every non-Muslim I come across and like I tell them about Allah and his message? No, that's, that's not something that's necessary. There are different ways to give dawah, right? Um, part of giving dawah is being honest, being upright, being trustworthy. This was actually one of the, um, the strongest ways that the, many of the mushrikeen came to Islam, at least initially, right? They just saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they're like, man, this is such an amazing person. This is such an amazing being. Like, look how he's dealing. Like, why, why do you act like that? Why do you deal like that? Why do you, you know what I mean? Why do you interact with us in this way? And then you start, to, you know what I mean? Then you, it's, it's okay to open up and then it's okay to teach. Uh, how can we reconcile the apparent discrepancies between different hadith? It depends on the type of discrepancy. So there are, there are a few ways of dealing with discrepancies. Number one is figuring out, <coughs> number one, um, figuring out which one is, is one and abrog abrogating is one not. That you would have to look at the timeline or the Prophet Sallallahu He would say something that was very clear that he abrogated it, like it was something haram before and he, pr uh, he permitted it now. Uh, a clear example of is this, like, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarat al qubur fal an zuruha. He says, I used to prohibit you from visiting the graves, but now it's okay for you to do that. So this is something that shows that there might be something that was prohibited, but now it's okay. So that's one way of reconciling the hadith between a hadith that seem like they're, uh, that they are, there's a difference between them. Other ways is sometimes one hadith is sahih and the other one is not, right? So then you would take the sahih hadith in that situation. The other way is looking from a fiqhi perspective that he saw, I said, he might have said something here and then he said something over here. What happened over here, he might have meant it as a recommendation and over here, he might have meant it as an obligation, right? So there are different ways of looking at hadith in that way. Um, the other way of looking at it also, in, in line with the sahih and da'if, is that you have something that are called the ilal. So basically, even though both hadith, they look to be sahih, if you actually investigate, you'll find that there is a discrepancy and there is a mistake that one of the narrators made, or there's some kind of break in the chain that is unapparent. So that allows you to disqualify one of those hadith as well. Um, so these are, I would say, some of the more superficial ways of, of looking into the hadith and um, kind of uh, reconciling between them. What is the role of women in Islamic leadership and scholarship? Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he heard about the uh, leader of Persia being a female, he, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a, a people that have a woman as its leader would be, will not succeed. So Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he explains this to mean that he saw his son was talking specifically about Persia. Some scholars, they take it in general to say that, okay, women should not be leading. They should not be in leadership positions. Um, but because they're, they will be destroyed after that. But historically, that hasn't always been the case. You have had female leaders, and there are nations that still stood. There are nations that, still, um, that were still um, affluent. Uh, and you would have female leaders. So he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, many scholars say Ibn Hajar from them said that is specifically applied to them. But in general, I, it's not something that I feel is necessary. And uh, like, sort of like leading prayers, obviously that's not going to be a place for women. Um, female scholars, again, it's good. I, but again, I don't feel it to be necessary. Just like there are certain spaces where I don't feel it's meant to. Like I don't think men, men shouldn't be OBGYNs. Like 
That's it. Like, I, I don't think that every person needs to be involved in every single field. Even if you go into education today, uh, if you go into healthcare today, vast majority of them are women, vast majority. If you go into engineering, vast majority of them are men. There are certain fields where you have a leaning of professions, uh, whether those professions be male or whether those professions be female, and it's not something that is uncommon. And the same thing with Islamic scholarship. If you look historically in Islamic scholarship, a vast majority of it is men. Um, there, there is a big push that, oh, you know, there's, it's necessary and there's a need to have female speakers and to have female leaders and to have female scholars. I don't think it's necessary. Like, there's, it's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no driving need, you know, for, for that. Um, is, it, is it okay? Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's, historically, there have been female uh, scholars. Ibn Hazm, very famously, he had female teachers. Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, very famously, he had female teachers. Um Mahat al-Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha, Um Salama radiallahu anha. Both of them were very famously, they would teach, um, and they would uh, interact with others. So I'm not saying they don't exist, but do we need to have a push to that? Like, does the community need to make sure that, oh, we need to push for this, and is this something that's necessary? I don't feel it is. Um, and, and there are certain fields, like I said, there's going to be a gender preference where men lean toward particular fields and women lean toward particular fields, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's something that's normal. I think that's something that's healthy. Uh, I think it's something that should be encouraged, right? So if, if there's a natural inclination for one gender or the other to lean into a particular field, that's great. Does it mean that other, like, men can't enter education? Does it mean that men can't enter healthcare support? No, that's not what it means at all. It just means a, a majority of it will be women. Uh, does it mean that women cannot become engineers? No, that's not necessary, but a majority of it will be men. And these are some things that we, we have to understand. Bricklayers in the United States, 99.9% .9 of them are men, right? <laughs> if you look at uh, oil rigs, like people who run oil rigs, and like, you know, not, it's like 99, almost 100% of them is also men. You will have fields where you have a gender preference, and I don't see an issue with that. I don't see a problem with that because men and women complement each other ultimately. And there are certain things that men will do that women will not do. And there are certain things that women will do that men will not do. And we have to understand those differences. Those differences aren't here to create animosity between men and women. They're here to help us understand how we complement each other and how we work uh, with each other. So, um, like I said, I think it's, it's, it's fine. You know, if a woman wants to study and if she wants to become a female scholar, that's great. I, I, don't, I don't see an issue with that. It's absolutely halal, absolutely permissible for her. Is it something that, as a community, that needs to be pushed and like, oh, there's a need for this thing? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't hold that. And Allah knows best. Uh, I have some good news for some of you and some bad news for some of you. Um, I have been switched to the 1215 khutbah, except today. What do you, what happened? I need you to give the khutbah. Oh. <laughs> I will be giving the khutbah today. <laughs> uh, but from, uh, I guess th this week I'll be giving the 130 khutbah, inshallah. But from next week, uh, I will be giving the 1215 khutbah, and the Q&A will be at 12.05. Oh, I'm getting a thumbs down. Allah must done. But like I said, some people will be happy, some people won't be. But uh, from, from next week, inshallah, my, my regular slot will be the 1215 slot. And I happen to be giving the khutbah today as well, inshallah.